here we have the 1997 Toyota Land Cruiser Prado. This being the Prado means that it's in the smaller part of the Land Cruiser family. This is the mid-size version, not the full-size version. So this is my project car. I traded in my W210 Mercedes-Benz for this. Although it sounds like a good deal since the 210 is a bit of a headache to maintain, I still spent a couple of lot of money just to fix this up. First thing you'll notice is this car has a lot of issues, cosmetic-wise mostly. Over here you'll see that there are some pretty bad scratches. You can see that uh, there's so many micro scratches on the paint as well. The seals aren't in the best shape either. More broken seals over there. And if you move on over here, look at that. I'm pretty sure this wasn't an accident before and that it was just repaired by the previous owner. Next thing you'll notice is that this is not the standard color. I'm pretty sure that this car was repainted in this army olive drab green color. The Prado is supposed to come with a darker, more purplish or bluer green hue. Okay, take a look inside. The interior looks great, but I had a part of it reupholstered. When I first got this, uh, this area was torn up. One, two, three, even on the other side, they were all torn up. You can see a mismatch between the leather color here. This is the reupholstered one. Well, th these are still original. The headdress are also original. The steering wheel was rewrapped. Even the foam was replaced as the original foam was already crumbling. You can see that there's a small tear in that. We're missing the cover for the fuse box. The handbrake uh, boot is also cracked. Okay, let's hop on in. Got a grab handle over here. As usual, we want to check if, it, if the door has a good thud. Okay, that's a solid good old Toyota thud. So obviously no keyless entry. Fires right up. 129,150 kilometers. That may sound like a lot, especially for the Philippines. Uh, for this car, that's not. That's pretty low. I see a lot of these over 200,000 kilometers. The AC's blasting. Okay, there we go. It's blasting pretty cold. I recently had the uh, expansion valve in the dryer tank replaced, then I also had it charge it free on. Over here, uh, these don't work anymore. There's supposed to be a polarizing film that will make you see the display, but it uh, doesn't work. You can only get the light, but that's about it. Nothing else works. The antenna for the automatic antenna, which we're missing. Over there outside, somewhere there. These are the buttons for it, but since it's missing, they don't do anything. You have a rear cool button and a rear heat button over here. I had this replaced to this uh, bit older style, but way more modern than the original one that came here. It's head unit, it's a decent head unit. Our uh, sun visor is missing on the driver's side, but the passenger side has it. We have our light here, and we have the tilt and sliding sunroof, which I shall show you over here. Okay. It's not the biggest sunroof, but it's fine. Okay, that's the steering wheel. Moving on to the center console. Okay, so you have your traditional shifter, nothing fancy, no push button or anything. If you've seen my previous video on the Land Cruiser, the modern one, the full size one, you'll see that it also has this thing. It says the ECT power and the ECT second there. So even this being a 1997 has the same thing. Second, if you want the car to start in second gear, that way it's not that jerky. And power gives you a bit of a tighter throttle response. In the newer Land Cruiser, you also see it, it was a uh, turn button thing. It was an electronic switch to change your drive modes. But over here you have your high, which is your regular. 
you have your high with lock differential, the neutral, and the low locked. So obviously you don't want to use any of the locking diff while you're driving on road. You have heated seats, both sides. Going on to the middle, you have these cup holders that are removable, or you can just put it back like this, then they go down. Middle, you have a small cubby here. This one goes up, and this bigger one goes up too. Decent size. Cruise control, you have cruise control. 1997, that's, that's good. Power mirrors, no folding mirrors, but you have uh, power tilting mirrors. You have fog lamp switches, but this car doesn't seem to have fog lamps anymore. You have the switch uh, to adjust the brightness of your speedometer. And you only have automatic uh, one touch down, not one touch up for the driver's side. For the rest, they're all uh, manual. You gotta hold them down. Power locks, you have it. Okay, let's move on over to the back. Okay, first thing you notice here, uh, same thing, you have the mismatched leather because this is original. Well, this is, uh, oh, sorry, this is the reupholstered one. Well, this is original. You have your rear uh, manual climate control switch. You have decent space at the back. It's not the biggest, but it's pretty good for a car this size. Now, there's two ways for these seats to fold down. First way, is you'll see that there's a button here at the back which you can reach. Just pull on that, there. And this entire seat folds flat like that. Or, since this car is supposed to have a third row, the way you enter the third row is you pull this lever and this entire seat assembly moves forward. That way you can enter through here. But as you can see, this car does not have the third row. It was probably removed by the previous owner. Let's keep the seats at that for now. Let's move on to the back. Okay, this, uh, unlike most newer Prados, the rear tailgate uh, window doesn't open. So you have a huge spare tire at the back. And over here, you open it. There's a lot of stains. I'm not sure from where, but uh, I couldn't get them off anymore. You have a lot of space at the back, especially without the third row seats. This one, you can push this so that the uh, rear tailgate doesn't swing and hit you when you're doing something here at the back. But this one is already stuck. You can't seem to lock or unlock. It's just permanently unlocked. So from there... Oh, this is where you put your... Uh, windshield washer for the back. So that's just a nifty place to hit it in. Windshield washer fluid. Just put it back. Got a nip that's uh, sagging already. Got a handle. I don't know why you're gonna need that, but it's there if you need it. These uh, spare tires are pre demoed. They're 265 7016s. We have come a long way. Modern Prados are just way bigger than 16s. And for the tires of this one, you have a full run. This seems to be like a China brand of tires. I'm not exactly sure if these are good. I doubt they are, but they're wrapped in 265 7016s as well. And now let's open the hood. Opening up the hood. For the engine of this car, uh, Number one, the hood, nothing special. You got your old rod, you don't have any of those hydraulic shocks. It's a 3.4 liter, 5DZ FD, the V6. These are pretty reliable, and you'll find them in older forerunners as well. I got everything swapped out. I got a new uh, air filter, had the injectors cleaned, I got new spark plugs in there, had oil change, the transmission change, everything. But right now, the car is running really well. It's just medic issues you've got to deal with. Okay, so now let's take the 1997 Prado out for a drive. I'm just gonna keep it in normal mode for now. No second, no power. 
you're obviously gonna notice the hood start once. It's really nice to have it there. It also kind of helps to show you where the frontmost edge of your car is. So when you drive this thing, uh, what you notice is that if you're coming from even a modern vehicle, a modern uh, cheaper SUV, like the Fortuner Tramontero, this is way more comfortable. Even on speed bumps, even on harsh roads. I'm not sure if it's because the Land Cruiser lineup really has better suspension or these just have a smaller 16 inch rims. The steering is just as heavy as that you get in a Fortuner. But it feels more connected to the road. The newer Fortuners and Novas and even the newer Land Cruisers, they feel a bit more artificial. I think there's a bit more power steering science involved in that. This is a nice car to drive. I use this car as my coding car with the Fortuner, the 2016 model as my daily. And uh, I really enjoy using this car way more than that. Overall, for the price of this car, uh, taking into account the trade-in of the W210, it's as if I only got this car for around 320,000 pesos, which is uh, it's not the best price, but we can do with that. But this mileage though, that's not bad at all. Do note that I had to spend a lot of money rebuilding the transmission. When I first got this, all the uh, internals of transmission were just shot. Everything was sticking together. I don't even know how this thing ran at first. Over here, you can see. Transmission's good now, even if I uh, give it a bit more throttle. Now, the car feels fast. It's not fast, but it feels fast. Why? Because the engine's pretty loud. It's an older V6, it's an older big engine. And it gives you a lot of that sound, but not much power. But because of the sound, it gives you a sense that, okay, I think I'm going fast. Note that this is stock exhaust. doesn't feel that old. It still feels kind of modern. As we turn this corner, I'm going to try to give it an acceleration test. Just wanted to see how fast it accelerates. It feels way faster than it is. Okay, so from here, this is an incline. Okay, so you get all that noise. You're just doing 40 kilometers per hour feels fast because of the sound. Nothing special about it, but this is pretty reliable. This platform is known to be very reliable. 500,000 kilometers in the Philippines, no problem. Now see, 129,000, we've got a long way to go.